Hello, Freighter Xavier. You requested for people to send in video questions for you, so here is mine. It'll probably be more of a ramble than a question, so I hope that it makes some sort of sense. If you listen to it, great. If not, well, whatever. I'm 30 years old. I still live with my parents. Never had a girlfriend. Still a virgin. <sighs> What did I get myself into? Well, I did ask for it, didn't I? Meet George. He is the first person to send in a video question. But, as he stated, it's more of a ramble. An eight and a half minute ramble. Mainly on just how bad everything is for him. George has a lot of issues. And has decided to test me right out of the gate. Now, I had originally hoped to get more than one video question in on a single video. But, it's looking as if George is going to get an entire video to himself. Now that's not an invitation to send in a 10 or even a 5 minute question. I am making an exception for George. Because strangely enough, I identify with what he's going through. Which we'll get into. But it's going to be a long one, so let's get into it. I'm 30 years old. I still live with my parents. Never had a girlfriend. Still a virgin. But my issue is not, oh, I need to listen to some RSD Tyler and become a pickup artist or something, go pick up chicks, and that is the solution. That is not what I feel is really bugging at me with life. Well, it's part of it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have brought it up in your opening statement. I'm going to let you finish, but I'm going to have to pull a Kanye on you and stop you right there for a moment. Because the one thing that drives me absolutely nuts is people who ask for advice but who aren't actually open to the advice. That the solution must fit their preconceived notions and ideas. Which, if that worked, it wouldn't be an issue in the first place. Now, you may not resonate with RSD Tyler, and that's fine. He's got plenty of other people working for him. You can listen to RSD Todd. He's a little bit more introverted. The point is the RSD guys know their stuff when it comes to women. I don't think you need to worry though about becoming a pickup artist. You would have to work many, many years to get to that level. And the truth is, I don't listen to RSD Tyler for the pickup stuff anyway. You may need to, but I do not. I listen to him because he talks about setting personal boundaries creating core confidence from within, the importance of meditation, achieving a state of abundance. I could go on and on. That's what I'm listening to. And it's not a coincidence that the same skills and principles that have made him a successful pickup artist can also help you to achieve anything else you want in life. Go figure. I mean, the YouTube name that you've chosen for yourself to identify yourself is forever alone feels so it's got to be bugging you man <laughs> i mean we could do some magic to help remedy the problem but again action supports the magic and magic supports the action i don't know exactly why you're opposed to rsd when, from my perspective, what he's teaching is the fastest way to remedy that issue of yours. Perhaps you're coming from a white knight type of frame where all, you know, PUAs are bad. And if that's the case, you got to understand that the Disney fairy tale that's told in movies and TV is just that. It's a fairy tale. And if by some random chance you did happen to have that fairy tale come true and get yourself a girlfriend, you're going to have to have the skills to hold on to her if you want to keep her. This is really the only thing I'm going to chastise you about. 
because not being open to that is putting a limitation, a very big limitation on yourself, which can lead to another 30 years of being alone. But if you're cool with that, then, you know, hey, that's your life. So let's see what else is bothering you. It is ultimately this feeling of uselessness and feeling like I know that there's something I want to do and there's something that I know I need to do, but I'm just not sure what or where to even look or how to find out or anything like that. I feel like life has become completely meaningless. I feel like all of my motivation, drive, passion is completely gone. The only thing that I seemingly enjoy anymore, if you would even call it that, it's mostly cathartis, it, cathartis, this is whatever, is to go outside to the park, sit under a tree, and just be alone. Just to recharge and recover. So George is in a really, really dark place. Everything's meaningless. He feels useless. Life is not fun anymore. And there's no motivation there because everything's meaningless. And I've been there. And it's something I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. It's a state of not caring more than you care. Now, I had different issues than you, but the place was the same. So I can relate to that, and I know how that is. The feeling of numbness that heck even getting angry is at least feeling something it's like you're dead inside which is also an indicator of emotional blockage the feelings of joy cannot flow through you you know in my case i had an accident at my job when i did work nine to fives and i busted up my back really bad was in constant pain and could barely walk. I mean, it was a struggle to even take out the trash. And I had to go through years of physical therapy and chiropractic treatments. And couldn't do the same work that I did. I was about your age. And there's nothing like taking away a man's work and his purpose to bring on those feelings of uselessness and despair. Because it makes you feel as if you are not a man. What is motivation tied to? Mars. Mars is masculine energy. That drive that keeps you on your purpose. Mars energy also seeks out the feminine energy. And if you take away one or both of those things, your purpose and or women, your Mars is not going to be satisfied. And you can easily start to feel as if everything is meaningless. No wonder you feel as if there's no point. I'm surprised it took this long, to be honest. And, you know, I hate to say it, but RSD Tyler teaches about being on your purpose. Stepping up as a man. This is what's going to help build your confidence. Is taking action, because Mars is tied to action. As I said, you don't have to listen to RSD, but we are going to have to change your mindset a bit. We're going to have to get you to focus not on what you don't have, but on the things that you do have. Because I got to tell you right now, you're not a bad looking guy. You're a decent looking guy in the prime of his life who simply has a bad case of inertia who has been experiencing his Saturn return, which we're going to get into in a moment. But I want to give you some perspective in that I would trade everything that I have right now to swap places with you. Yes, you heard that right. I would trade it all to be 30 years old again, living at home with no girlfriend or prospects. Why? Because time is more valuable than money. It's the most valuable commodity we have. Knowing what I know now, I could get it all back within five, six years, and then some probably, and still have an extra eight or nine years left. 
to me it would be like rolling back the clock and you have no obligations you have like a clean slate to start from how many of us can say that you may not have a lot of money to fully utilize that clean slate at the moment but it is doable and we will get into that a bit down the road as well the point is is things aren't as bad as they seem and I know that they seem really really bad because I've been in that dark place it is extremely difficult to get motivated under those circumstances in that frame of mind but what's at the very core of that feeling is your feelings about yourself I know you're looking at all the circumstances around you, but it's you who feel like you have no meaning. It's you who you feel is useless. And it's you who are lacking the confidence and experience to handle it. And your Saturn return has come around full circle to give you a kick in the ass, as it does for everyone between the ages of 28 to 30. This is what has given you this sense of urgency, this wake-up call of, oh my God, what have I done with my life? I have to do something. That's what it does. Saturn is all about responsibility. It is the reaper, not so much the grim reaper of death, although that's part of it. But when Saturn comes around, it reaps what you have sown. And if you haven't sown anything, if you've just neglected your time and wasted it, that's what you're going to reap. And you're going to look around wondering why you don't have anything and put this sense of urgency on your responsibilities. And it can also cut away that which you have been neglectful and irresponsible with. Things that are holding you back. But if you are responsible, if you are on your purpose, if you have been sowing your seeds accordingly, when Saturn comes around, you're going to reap the rewards. You know, I got into magic as a last resort from being in the place that you're in right now. And if it wasn't for magic, I don't know where I'd be, man. I really don't. I feel as if this path that I chose out of desperation was the thing that saved me all of a sudden things started to change for me and I started to change as within so without no but that's what it took for me not only was I getting the results but you know I had a purpose again a truer purpose than what I had to begin with and I feel as if I had to go through that so that I could help people like you and relate to them. You only really help people if you can relate to them. If you don't relate to what they're going through, then you're just wasting your time. But even though I can relate to that, I don't resonate with it anymore. I mean, how can I? I found my way out. There ain't no way in hell I'm going back in. And it's that which keeps me on my purpose and doing what I do. Because if I didn't, um, I would probably slip back into that as a default. And that's just simply part of my motivation now is to make sure that that does not happen. As I said, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. The darkest place you can be, in my experience and opinion. The other thing you need to realize is that it's not just you and your circumstances. It plays a part in it. But that's not it. This can happen to anyone. If it can happen to Robin Williams, who had everything going for him, it can happen to anyone. To this day, I still have back problems. I have my good days and I have my bad days. But I keep on keeping on. And there's a lot of people out there that are glad that I did because now I'm in a position to help others. But to get there, I first had to help myself by getting myself out of that dark place. So just know that it can be done. That all is not lost. Now let's continue. I 
had this very distinct anxiety when I was 20, 21 for a while, almost waking up in a panic from sleep, knowing that there was something that I had to do. Something I had to know or do or learn or this. So I have to hold on to that feeling that there was something, some sort of a purpose that I have. And I don't mean that in that I'm special or better than anyone else or I want to pat myself on the back. Sort of, I was maybe incarnated for a certain mission to do, as silly as that feels to say, but that's just what it is. The big question now is, what is it? What is what is my general purpose at all? You Just to give you a quick rundown of where I am in life right now, I... I'm originally from Ukraine. We moved here when I was about eight. You know, did the whole growing up thing like every other kid. Yeah, guaranteed I got more into video games, got fat and all that, but went to college. Didn't really care much. I got a bachelor's in computer science under this little naivety, maybe a little childhood fantasy. I wouldn't even say fantasy. Oh, maybe I'll make video games, but didn't really care. I graduated, and I thought to myself, well, I don't really know what I want to do. Well, I use the library, so I thought, well, how about a job in the library? Oh, it seems like you don't have to deal with people, whatever. So I got a job in the library, and that's where I've been for essentially the past nine and a half years. And I've moved up in some positions there, but ultimately, I feel nothing but pure apathy anymore well at least you feel that you have a purpose waiting for you out there somewhere which is good sometimes our purpose finds us instead of the other way around as i said i had to go through that dark place myself in order to find mine or i should say it found me but for now until you find it or it finds you you may have to make finding your purpose your purpose as hokey and cliche as that may sound. And you said you've experienced this anxiety around age 21, which is about the time of your Saturn square. See, Saturn takes that 28 years to get all the way around the chart. And so every seven years, it's going to be aspecting your natal Saturn position and bring these feelings of responsibility to you. So that's of no surprise to me. You've also been experiencing it again, even stronger as of late. And at age 35 through 37, you're going to feel it again. And if you don't have a handle on it by 42 through 44, <laughs> if you think this one's bad, wait till you have transit Saturn opposed to your natal Saturn and transit Uranus opposed to your natal Uranus at the same time. The infamous midlife crisis. You're going to need to start sowing your seeds now. There is no interest. You know, I got benefits, pay is okay, but ultimately, I just don't really care. And I'm not sure what I'm looking for. Is it another job? Is it a cause? Is it something? Maybe you've already sensed that I am definitely a polarized person, and that is part of my personality. There are certain viewpoints and beliefs and political views, if you will, that I have that are important to me. They didn't come overnight. They were discovered over a number of years, and that's who I am and what I believe in. So it is not possible for me to just be in the middle and not be, get bothered by anything. So I thought I would just say that. So, Well, George, it comes down to how badly do you want things to change? Because everybody's polarized in different areas to certain degrees. That's normal. But people need to examine which polarizing beliefs are helping them and which are hindering them. Because a lot of times it comes down to the beliefs that we hold in our mind that end up holding us back. They're not serving us. Depolarization is very, very similar to 
the dark place that you're in right now in the sense that you can have it one way or the other so it doesn't really matter nothing really matters it's just without all the feelings of hopeless despair and uselessness that come along with that you could take things or leave them and it won't really matter you're better equipped to handle things when they go wrong that's what depolarization is like things just kind of roll off your back because a lot of things don't really matter. You see people on Facebook arguing politics, like the most polarized thing you can talk about. In the end, they just wasted their time, as if, you know, the person's just going to suddenly change their mind on their entire political stance from a Facebook post. A lot of polarization is just a bunch of wasted time, in my opinion. It's really a tightrope walk. It's a fine balance. You know, on one hand, you know, I'm hopeful. I feel things have meaning. But in the end, does it really matter? When nobody gets out of this life alive, we're all going to the same place. We all have the same end. So, I mean, if that's the case, it's not really about the destination. It really is about the journey. And if you're too polarized, the journey's going to suck. <laughs> you talk like you are, you know, purposely avoiding people, being around others. When you're depolarized, those people don't really have that much of an effect on you. But when you're polarized, they can absolutely have an impact on you through magnetism, through polarized magnetism, attraction, repulsion, like, dislike. This YouTube video has a like and a dislike button. That is to cater to people's polarization. So you're not interested either in depolarizing yourself. Again, it would make things easier for you, but you kind of already have that feeling already because what does it matter? And you can use that feeling to actually help turn things around for you. You just have to get rid of the melancholy associated with it. Because not giving a damn can actually mimic confidence. Should I go approach this girl? Well, things don't matter anyway, so I might as well. That kind of thing. As long as you're not using it as an excuse not to. You need to always be taking action. If you want to turn your life around, you need to take action. Massive action. And I know this has been one of your sticking points. Is actually taking action. But to your credit, you did send in this video, which is a good first step in taking action. I'm sure you probably did it with an attitude of, well, what the hell, I may as well just see what he says. And that's fine, you know, as long as you're taking action. I know in the past I have given the example of George Costanza doing the opposite in Seinfeld as a last resort when everything else fails. To just do the opposite. But in your case, I would be more like Jim Carrey in Yes Man. Where he couldn't say no to anything. Which forced him to take action. Anytime where you're going to say no to something. To avoid discomfort. Or the fear of what may happen. You need to say yes to. The only thing you need to be afraid of is not taking action. Because you haven't done so for so long. In your particular case, not taking action should scare the living hell out of you. Now, out of everything that I've said so far, you should pay attention to this the most. Because that's what's come to me from my subconscious. I had an image of Jim Carrey in that movie pop into my head. The idea here is to get you moving whether you feel like it or not, and we both know that you're not going to feel like it. That's what inertia is. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest, and objects in motion tend to stay in motion. I had thought to myself, okay, you know, as a child, you know, I sort of liked video games, even though I don't play them anymore. It just feels like escapist nonsense and nonsense to me. So I started learning a little bit, and a week later, I'm making this little ball jump around, and I thought to myself, what the hell am I doing? What am I doing? What do I hope to gain out of this? 
What do I hope in the journey? You know, oh, maybe make games to put on mobile devices and make money off of that. Oh, is this, is this what I want? Uh, uh, I don't know. So I gave up, and then I thought maybe I should get into programming. Maybe I could get a nice, fancy job that pays a lot of money. But is that, was that what I'm looking for? I don't know. Is that, didn't even try anything. Do I want to work for somebody else necessarily put in all this effort for just another job so my mind just won't cooperate there's probably something stuck deep inside there but I just can't get the information out if it's even there at all I am notoriously f paralyzed paralyzed by indecision and always trying to find the pros and the cons and the best this and that so that I end up making no decision and so that's the thing what do I do and there it is the root of the majority of your problems the inability to make a decision and the inability to actually stick with something to the end to finish what you start and we're going to end up taking a look at this in your chart I realize at the end of the day only I can decide only I can know but when seemingly nothing makes sense and there's seemingly nothing really tugging me in any direction if you will What do you do? I feel like I'm quickly going down the road of another statistics where you read about these suicide rates of people, which I totally understand. This feeling of absolute uselessness, pointlessness in life. So, I hope I don't get there, so I guess that's why I'm sending in this YouTube video to a uh, YouTube magician. <laughs> you know, I started working on this video on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, we had gotten word that my girlfriend's best friend that she grew up with, her son, 30 years old, had committed suicide. As I said, this can happen to anyone. This was a guy who had seemingly everything going for him. And a very strong guy at that, too. Marine. It's very, very difficult to get out of that dark place. But those who do often find themselves in a position to help be the guiding light for others who are still in there. I started this channel to teach people about magic and the occult the importance of mindset, etc. And I often get messages telling me how much I've helped them regain their hope, regain their purpose, got them out of a dark place, helped them through the difficult time in their life. And that's really not what I set out to do, although it's given me the most fulfilling rewards by doing so. And I suspect that when you come through this, you're going to find yourself in a similar position at some point. But in order to get to that point to help others, you must first learn to help yourself. I've got, you know, I got this started reading a little bit. I've got the Kabbalah book, Transformation, and I just can't seem to do anything. I just feel like it just starts getting too airy-fairy for me that I start leaving the ground and losing any groundedness and that's what I'm looking for probably so that I can make a better decision. I can't be up in the clouds. I need to be here and now. Some practicality, some probably not and as you can probably tell from the way I'm talking my mind is just all over the place. And I agree that you need to be more grounded. You can certainly use more of the element of earth, but more than that, you need the element of fire, as air and water are tending to dominate your chart. Thoughts and feelings, but no action and no tangible results. 
So you gotta add the fire. You gotta add the action. Air plus water plus fire equals earth. The solid results. I, one last thing that I can think of, I got an astrology reading done by, if you're familiar with Jordan Maxwell, you probably are, through his services, you know, this guy gave me this chart the way he did it on his own. You know, you said, what's your Gemini and or your Mars and your Venus? It looks like my Venus is in Pisces, Gemini, or Mars is in Gemini. I listen to the astrology reading and just nothing seemingly clicks. He talks about you got to... You know, you're good at the dragon's tail, but it can sting you back, which is in Libra for me. But Libra, the scales, maybe I'm always trying to balance it out, everything in my head, and that just keeps stinging me, and I need to pursue the dragon's head, Aries, fire, action. Okay, so I don't know what type of chart you were given, but you notice that they've added the 13th constellation of Ophiuchus in there which isn't a part of traditional astrology and if you notice that the signs and the houses line up a little too perfectly which never happens at least i've never seen it the odds would be like a gajillion to one also in this chart it's showing you as a taurus ascendant and dominated by the element of earth so i went ahead and plugged in your data as written at the top of this chart shown which by the way I suspect is also inaccurate the time of 5 p.m. is a little too precise not that it can't be but you know going by the numbers you got a 1 in 60 shot I almost never see anyone with precisely exactly on the hour birth times a few but it's not that common so if you can look up your birth time, you know, take the action, get a copy of your birth certificate or certificate of live birth and see the time on there, that would be most helpful and provide the most accurate results instead of just ballparking it. Otherwise, we're going to have to go with the chart that I got from this data, which is completely different than what you're holding up. So I don't know what the F Jordan Maxwell's doing, but I think he owes you an apology and a refund. Surprised he doesn't have your midheaven conjunct the fixed star of David Icke in the sign of Alex Jones. Okay, maybe I do pick on him a bit. And I seemingly don't know what the fire in action is. What do I even want anymore? So... Thanks for listening. And thank you for taking action and sending in the video question slash ramble and for taking the time to listen to my assessment. And we're not finished yet. This video is running a bit long and so it's looking like I'm going to have to make this a two-part video. We've heard all about George's problems and when we come back we're going to take a look at his chart and start working on the solutions. In the meantime, George, if you can find me a more accurate birth time, that would be extremely helpful. Otherwise, we need to go with what we got. What is for certain is that you have been experiencing your Saturn return, as you are just at that age. So, that will do it for today. But just a quick reminder that the third cycle of the Laws of Magic is now available for sign up and will launch on the 29th. Also, if you send in a video question for our 10,000th subscriber mailbag milestone, you will be moved to the front of the line, as I am being swamped with questions all the time. So, with all that, I will see you next time. Take care.